Well, conventionally, poverty has been, has been measured focusing on income or consumption. And this, in a U.S. environment, would be the number of dollars that a family has available to buy things or the number of dollars they use to buy things. But the purchase behavior of a family is just part of the defining characteristic of poverty. Because if a family has very low education, or a family has uh, poor health, or an individual has poor health, or if the environment is very bad for living, such as sanitation facilities are terrible, this can be as important as having low income. So what we do in our multidimensional poverty measure is take into account additional dimensions that directly affect people's well-being. Income is interesting because it's a means to an end, not the end themselves. We begin with several dimensions of well-being and we ask what would constitute being deprived in that dimension. So perhaps in the United States having anything less than a high school education or not achieving a high school education would make you deprived. In other environments it may be not having primary school education. Uh, a certain level of health. There are ways of indicating whether you're in good health or bad health, etc., etc. You have a deprivation level, a cutoff for every dimension, and then we look at the range of deprivations that a person experiences, and if they are deprived enough, in other words, they have enough dimensions in which they're deprived, we consider them to be poor. Now it has changed who is poor, it has changed how poor people are seen as being, and that's natural when you include more information. So the whole idea is to include more information into the way you're measuring poverty, to know who's poor with greater certainty. But uh, let's see, now going to the multidimensional poverty measure, the MPI, which the UNDP recently has reported results on, uh, it <laughs> has indeed said that India, for instance, has a great deal more poverty, let's say, than what they might have thought otherwise using an income-based approach. This is an amazing uh, uh, sort of outcome uh, from, uh, for a lot of people, but it isn't that amazing for academics or people who have been watching India because we've seen a tremendous growth in India, income growth, which has led to income poverty falling at a pretty rapid clip. But at the same time, malnutrition among kids hasn't budged. And so what do you expect, a multidimensional a multi measure that takes into account other dimensions that haven't changed much, what do you expect for that measure to find? Well, it's been interesting to watch how country after country has expressed interest in the multidimensional poverty approach. But what really has excited people is the release of the UNDP Oxford numbers, which said here is what poverty would be by our measure over 104 countries with particular calibration of dimensions and cutoffs. And so it excited a great discussion and has caused more countries to come to the World Bank, to the UN, to various other international organizations, and to me personally and say, how can we implement this? What would be the way that we could put this into effect in our country to get a better idea of what's going on in terms of poverty? What's interesting about this index is that we're really presenting a framework for others to use. And we've called it open source framework or open source technology. That a country or even an NGO or a, a big agency like USAID can adopt as a way of taking into account the various dimensions that are important for them to take into account. And so who determines the dimensions? Well, the user. It may be people in a village that say, we think these are the important dimensions to, to take into account. And then it may be that they would be able to determine cutoffs and say, we think that someone is poor who doesn't, who deprived, who doesn't have uh, this or has the, is in this situation. And then what's interesting about it is that there's a final type of cutoff, and that's the determination of who is actually poor. That can be done at the local level, but it could also be done at a higher level, reflecting the realities of limited budgets. So here's the 
deprivations. Here are the you know, numbers of deprivations that different people have. Well, over here we might say that you're poor if you have five or ten deprivations. Higher if it's more lenient at the local level. It could be more restrictive at the upper level to reflect the actual you know, budgetary exigencies. So uh, the flexibility of it is, is pretty amazing, and it can be used in a variety of circumstances with uh, you know, uh, allowing people who are being affected by this to be part of the process by which poverty is measured, determined, and policies are then developed based on what is measured.